Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll study about the creation of linked service for Salesforce Connector. The Salesforce Connector here will be Salesforce Legacy. On the screen, you can see here the documentation by Microsoft for Azure Data Factory, under which we are in the section on the left panel, you can see here the different connectors. Okay, under the connector section, we have Salesforce. And under Salesforce, we have two. Salesforce and legacy. So the current video is for legacy and this documentation is to copy data from and to Salesforce using ADF or Synapse pipelines. So if we go down, it supports only two activities, copy and lookup activity. So the prerequisite here is you should have Salesforce account in place. If you don't have one, you can create one or I'll create a separate video for creation of a separate free account. Then we have to establish the link service. We have to catch few data from that Salesforce account and fill in the link service. So let me take you to the Azure portal. Here we are in Azure Data Factory. We'll go to the manage section here on the left side. And under the link services, we'll create a new one. So we'll click on plus new. Here in the data store, we'll search for Salesforce. It will show up the different options which are present. We have to select Salesforce Legacy. We'll click over it, click continue. Let's name it as Salesforce Linked Service LS. Then the integration runtime will be auto resolving. So the first setting is environment URL. Environment URL will get from the Salesforce account. So let me take you to the Salesforce account. Yeah, so we are logged out. Let me log in to the Salesforce account. Here we are in the Salesforce account and at the setup home page we are present. And if we go to the profile section on the right side, we can see here the account or the environment URL. We'll just copy this URL, paste it. And now we have to add HTTPS or you just copy this entire URL, go to the Azure Data Factory here in place of login.salesforce.com, just paste that URL, okay? This should be fine. To pasting the environment URL, we have to write the username. So the username is the name through which we have created that account. So I have created with this username, the password which you have set for that user in the Salesforce account, type the password, then comes the security token or the Azure key vault. We'll go back again to the Salesforce account here. Now here in the account, we'll find the security token. If we click on profile and go to the settings, in the settings, we have under my personal information, there are different sub tabs. We'll go to the reset my security token on the left panel. Here we have this option of reset security token. We'll click over it. It will send an email to the user email address. So here is my email address, email account. I'll go to this email inbox. Here we have the security token in the email. We'll copy the security token. We'll go to the Azure portal paste the security token. The next option to fill in is the API version of the Salesforce. So we'll go back again here in the portal. We have to get the API version. In order to get the API version, we have to go to the left pane, quick find and type API. When we type API, it will show up the different tabs. Under the integration tab, we have API. We'll click over it. It will show us the different WSDL. So we'll click on this generate enterprise WSDL, which will take us to a next page. When we click on this, it will take us to a new page. Let's wait for this page to completely load. And here on the top, it will give us the service API version, which is 62.0. So we'll write here 62.0. Now this looks fine. We have filled in all the 
needed details, we'll click on test connection. Here, the testing is in progress. Connection successful. That means we have given the correct details. Now we'll click on create. Our link service to the Salesforce legacy account has been established, which is Salesforce LS. Now we can go to the author tab and create a pipeline to copy data from that Salesforce account to our ADLS maybe. Let me take you back to this. So here we are in the Salesforce account. We have object manager. In the object manager, you can see that there are different objects which are present here. And on the right side, we have this option to create custom object, custom object from spreadsheet. So we'll click on create custom object. It will give us the option to create custom object by filling the details. Or what we can do is in the object manager, we can create custom object from spreadsheet. So this will ask us to log in again. This option will ask us to log in again and it will ask us to select a spreadsheet in the form of Excel or CSV, Google Sheet from any of these three options. It will ask us to select a spreadsheet and upload. So we'll click on upload. We'll upload a CSV for us. So let's upload. So let me upload some data from here. Let's say student.csv and the upload is in progress. It completed. Yep. So it shows up here the different details that six rows data has been uploaded. Now we'll click on next. The label will be shown like this API name, etc. We'll click on finish. The object is getting created. So it says that the object creation has been done. We'll go back to the main page. Here we can refresh the page. And now here we can see that the student, yeah, student custom object type has been created here. Okay. If we open this label, we can see here the student API name as underscore C. Now this underscore C denotes custom object, which we have uploaded to the object manager in the Salesforce account. And now in the ADF, we'll go and try to fetch details from this student object. But before that, let me take you to the student.csv file and show you how it looks like. So yeah, here it has five columns with some rows in it with the student related data. So this data we are going to import and we'll go next to the Azure portal. We'll create a new pipeline. We'll name this as import custom object from Salesforce. And we'll take the copy activity in the canvas. So the source for us in the copy activity will be Salesforce. So we'll go to the source tab, click on plus new, select Salesforce legacy. Here we have to select from the link service Salesforce LS, which we have created shortly before. Now the object API from this link service will be loaded shortly. So we'll click on the drop down and wait for the object API to load so that we can take up the student custom object which we have created in the account. So here from the drop down, we'll search for student and it shows up as student underscore C. We'll click on OK, right? So this looks fine. We can now select whether we want to take the object API or the query. If we select query, it will ask us to write query. That is select, let's say, from 
this entire custom object we want to select all from select star from we have to select the api name we'll copy this name we'll paste here and this should be fine okay the read behavior is query so this looks fine now we'll go to the sync tab sync data set we want the data to be loaded into adls gen 2 we'll click on new we'll select adls gen 2 we'll click on continue make it in the form of csv continue link service we already have in place so we'll just select the folder where we want the data to be landed click ok click ok we completed source and sync setting will validate this pipeline publish all the changes and then perform a debug run so here we can see publishing completed and the pipeline run is shown below pipeline status is in progress pipeline succeeded go to the new tab and open the storage account where we gave the target the target was input folder we'll open the input folder the data landed but here it is in .txt format now we want to go to the pipeline again here in the pipeline, we'll go and open the sync data set. In the file path, we'll give the name of the file. Okay. Salesforce output dot CSV. And now we'll again publish the changes. Go to the pipeline, perform a debug run so that we get the data in the form of CSV. Let's wait for the pipeline to get completed. Then succeeded we'll go back to the input folder we'll click on refresh and this time we have sf output.csv created we'll click over it click on edit and preview and we could see here the data created for the student csv on the extreme right side we can see here the data student id class subject marks and college right ID, class, college, subject marks. And here we have a few extra columns which are present in the Salesforce data. That is the metadata fields which it generates on its own, like the ID, owner ID, name, date, modified date, timestamp, etc. If we want only specific columns to be landed here in the Azure Gen2 account, we'll go back to the pipeline here in the copy activity source page will select here only the column names which we want so that not all columns are loaded from the salesforce so that not all columns are loaded from the salesforce custom object only specific columns will be loaded so this is how we copy data or custom object or objects from the salesforce account using copy activity in azure data factory do let me know in comments if you have any queries thank you for watching happy learning